Hi everybody, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, Carnivish, Carnivore, very low, total carbs. I don't play with net, I don't play with bars, proteins, supplements, um, all those keto, keto pockets that want to be filled while the uh, trend is high so they can make their money and then get out when it comes to be that you didn't need it anyway, right? So, how are you today? I'm doing well. I'm out Ubering, don't you know? I've already done three trips and um, I'm looking forward to a busy day so I can um, do what I do with that, that business venture. Um, so anyway, I wanted to talk to you about the summer pulls and we have a lot of them between the cookouts and the gatherings, the weddings, family reunions, all the things that go on. And of course, I know you're shocked like I am. They revolve around food. Maybe not so much a wedding, although don't tell the bride that who's paying like a gazillion dollars per plate. But, you know, it, it, it's like it's like wherever you turn all summer long, there are pulls to eat standard favorites, standard grill things, standard hot season stuff, and, um, you know, tons of, of fruits that come from other countries that have been hybridized, if that's the word, filled with GMOs, not necessarily good for you. I call them bags of sugar. That's just me with my cynical way. But, you know, we're just pulled in every direction. And even thinking that you could veer off your keto carnivore carnivish food plan just to have a little bowl of fruit because a person, you know, hand cut everything and it's a fruit salad and everything's good for you in it um, might not necessarily be so, at least for us, comma, anymore. A lot of us gave up all fruits. Some of us have berries, but um, and then the veggie part, that's a big question mark. Some of us have found that having an older metabolism, the better we eat, the cleaner we eat, the less items we eat, the harder it is for our stomach to maybe digest the veggies. Now, I know Dr. Georgia Ede calls them anti-nutrients, anti <laughs> um, but to me, they're just veggies that I can no longer have. I have asparagus, cauliflower, crumbles, and Brussels sprouts on Sundays only, it is such a small sampling on the plate. People would say, why do you even bother to track it, weigh it, measure it? And they could be right. In the rest of the week, it's eggs in place of whatever veg there was or salad on the plate. I didn't intend for it to be this way. I loved my veggies. I loved my fruits too, but those were five years ago. I haven't had a fruit in a couple of years, not even a raspberry. But... Um, I didn't intend to give up veggies. I just thought that they could have an, a nice, you know, second hand part, the understudy of the meat, so be it on the plate, and that um, it would all bode well for me. But the veggies were telling me different. And after reading the fiber, fiber menace, I realized that, like, how come all of us all these years have been doing stuff? I remember Goody Beats was having the uh, psyllium. Could that be it? Anyway, he was taking fiber capsules and um, a lot of people drinking Metamucil um, or the Citrical or whatever all those different things are to make everything keep moving and, and come to find out that we don't really need those things to keep moving. Is there an adjustment? Perhaps, you know, when you're mostly carnivore, you're not going one all the time, two, maybe even daily. And um, it's a whole different ball game after you eat a lot of the meat and everything else, it gets digested, but it gets so used up that um, things have changed. Things do change. And um, if you want to get rid of that bloated, too much humidity kind of feeling that a lot of us get in the summer, yeah, go to mostly meat. I'm, t I'm telling you what really is that way. So back to the summer of choices. And um, I'm going to do another whole video on this, but there's a big difference between choice and decision. And if you were 
told you were a diabetic and you had to do insulin every day. You had to take your reading, you had to inject it, you had to do all kinds of stuff. The decision would be, I'm either going to be diabetes compliant or I'm really going to put my health at risk, right? And um, a lot of people become compliant because diabetes is dangerous. If you had, um, and so you can't be having the sugar, the donuts, the typical fare, the cereal, the toast, at least I hope not. And if you're an alcoholic, you can't have alcohol. You can't have a wine cooler just because it's the weekend and then hop back on to your sobriety. It cha it's a game changer, right? You just can't. You have to make the decision, I'm not going to drink. You, you make the decision, I'm going to manage my diabetes and do as I'm told and work on it. And I'm going to add my carnivore diet to it to get off these stupid, dumb meds faster than I ever can. So you make decisions, right? And the decisions are the game changers for you and your health, your longevity, and your day-to-day -day feeling of doing the right thing. Choices, on the other hand, are when you get someplace and somebody is a food pusher. <laughs> I know, surprise, surprise, right? And they're pushing something onto you. You're so skinny. Look at you last year. I mean, even since Christmas, you've lost even more. Come on, you can have this. This isn't a big deal. You loved this. I made it just for you. Come on, everybody else is having it. Look at me. I'm on Weight Watchers. I've lost 13 pounds. And I'm still going to have that thing with graham crackers, marshmallows, and Hershey's after the meal. I am because I've lost that weight, right? Isn't a typical American way to reward yourself with what you're not supposed to have as the reward for doing what you're supposed to do. Huh? <laughs> right? Figure that one out. We are so hooked on our sugar, our treats, our desserts, our cheats. It's amazing. So along comes the choice. I have the choice. Sure. I can do that. I can go home and on my chronometer, my fitness pal, my whatever, whatever, I can log what I've had, what I'm having. And it's like, you know, Log it, eat it, deal with it. It was worth it. Maybe, maybe not. But if you have health issues related to your food choices from all the years of having poor choices, why would you do that to yourself if you've been good? Why would you throw yourself off? Nobody has ever come back on here in a true confession and said, yep, no big deal, nope. No harm, no foul. I can have carbs anytime I want and not suffer. Good for you. I can have tons of fruits. I can have bowls of veggies and I don't suffer. Good for you. This is for the rest of us that it's no longer good for us. We no longer can escape any of those little consequences that we, we have. We don't, we just don't. And so sometimes our choice is to politely say, no, thank you, and say it firm enough that they don't push. So this is the time of year right now. It's June, and it's probably a good idea to get the verbiage that you're going to have when the food pushers descend upon you. And they will. It's a long season of outdoor cooking parties and weddings and family reunions and class reunions and all that stuff. So it's a good idea to get down what your decision is going to be. Are you going to get to this place and be wavy and wobbly and and woozy and, and just dive in and have it and say, I'll deal with it on Monday or Tuesday. Are you going to do that? Or are you going to stand solid and proud and firm of whatever way you eat your food and say, no, thank you. That's not on my food plan. The decision is yours. And then when you're presented the choices, if you've made the decision to not have any of that, then the choice is obvious. It makes it easier. Do you see the difference? The decision is the overall no more. Had enough, been to the buffet enough times in life. There's no taste that I've, I'm going to be missing enough to wreck my progress with what I've been doing here with no sugars, no grains, no artificial sweeteners, no fruits, maybe even no veg. So 
What is your decision? How are you going to handle the summer food pushers, the bounty that appears, that calls to you? And if it's your first summer, you're gonna be challenged a little bit and anticipate it. Get it in order for how you're going to handle it because it's coming. And it's gonna get you at a weak moment for every alcoholic beverage that you have at this gathering, you're gonna lose more and more and more resolve. Just be aware of that till you get to the, what the heck, I've been looking at that all night and you've had your four glasses of something or your four bottles of something and suddenly it seems like a good idea. And suddenly the consequences, I'll deal with it. Who cares? I've earned this. I've been really good. The great American way. Reward yourself with the crap that you just spent six months detoxing from. Does that make sense? Of course it doesn't. So anyway, make your decision. I'm going to wobble. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to, I owe it to myself. I'm going to do all of this sort of stuff. Or I'm going to remain as as vigilant as I was January 3rd when I finally decided to do something about it. I purged the pantry. I purged the freezer. I threw out all the leftover crap from the holidays. And I got serious about myself and my health. Are you going to be like that in July? Or are you going to say, oh, I haven't had one of those for a long, long time. It's really not that bad. <laughs> You're not on Weight Watchers anymore doing points, right? You're not saving your points to have a hot dog roll. No, you've given up the grains. Don't forget that. I didn't forget it. <laughs> Don't come to me and say, I forgot. You haven't forgotten. You might have, um, you might have had too much to drink and decided it was okay. You might have been just a sucker for the smells and the experience and said, this is okay. You might have just said, I'm going to blow it today. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not living inside your head. But <clears throat> you're going to get consequences. You're going to get withdrawal. And you're going to not feel good about yourself emotionally and maybe physically. So get your decision in place, how you're going to handle this summer. Because if it's your first summer, it's going to be a challenge. Know that going in. If it's your second, third, or fourth um, summer doing keto, carnivore, carnivish, just know nothing's changed. <laughs> it's still going to be all that stuff out there. How do you want to handle it? Just because you lost 110 pounds doing keto or carnivish or carnivore doesn't mean that you're allowed to have that stuff. If you plan it, it's rare and appropriate. Remember that, rare and appropriate. And it's planned. It's not the spontaneous, oh, F it, I'm going to have it. No. It's on Tuesday. You're doing your tracker for that event. You know what's going to be served and you plan it, right? I'm going to plan to have this re very rare and appropriate treat. And I'm stopping at that rare and appropriate treat. That doesn't mean I'm going to continue the whole day and blow it, at least blow it by whatever standards you might have gained by doing keto, carnivore, carnivish for the last number of weeks, months, days. So plan, don't be, don't be naive and think that you can handle it. If you add alcohol, it gets harder and harder to keep that resolve. Remember that. If you don't drink, remember it gets harder and harder. The sights, smells, and noises of people eating the stuff that you no longer have is going to be a challenge. Deal with it. Big girl panties, big boy boxers, and know that if you put your head on the pillow that night of that party, that reception, that whatever cookout, and you put your head on that pillow of abstinence, you're going to feel mighty, mighty special. And don't think that you can bring keto fied desserts to this function and get away with that. That's, that's near beer, right? That's a glass of near beer. And um, I know that I can't have it. There's no duels in my life anymore that there's a keto-fied brownie. Okay, take care of yourself. You know you've got this in you. You know you're going to be challenged. And so get it all into place, brother and sister, because it's coming. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto and the Challenges of the Summer Season. Bye-bye for now.